So we're going to keep an eye on how much you engage with the actual module website in Canvas because we can see uh, your activities in half and you come back to our website. But it's really important you do that because the time is very short. But there is there are plenty of activities, there are plenty of reading opportunities for you from our own book chapters and other books as well that are available to you. So at the end of the day, it's really down to you to engage, uh, read, and uh, so then you can get the best out of the module. And not only that, you actually get hopefully to get a good grade too. And that would be uh, an amazing thing. Okay. Of course, always while enjoying the module as well. So let's get to it. I'm going to start sharing my, uh, I think I've already shared, so you can actually see now. Um, if you don't see them anyway, these slides will be available in your, um, in your module website in Canvas. However, today is all about understanding, understanding social networks, right? Is the idea of going behind the scene and not just looking at technology itself, but looking at different areas as well to hopefully give us some insights into why social networks are relevant and why, um, why it actually works in the world today, okay? So let's get on with it. So what are the three things that we're going to focus in this lecture? Well, we're gonna try and define what social network is, right? Second, why it works, why it makes sense uh, to, to, to be socially connected, right? And then third, which is also an important one, uh, is understanding your network, understanding your network and understanding who you're connected with. So those are the three things we would like to cover in this session today. Okay, so let's get on into it. Now, is social networking a new thing, right? Well, social networking is not new. Social networking is as old as human being in this planet, right? So if you think about it, the actual reason why we managed to survive and build shelters and feed our families and everything else thousands and thousands of years ago is because we work together, we connected with others. And so that has helped us to bring enough food into our, to our families, build shelters and make sure that we could live and uh, again, succeed. And of course, be able to grow our families. So uh, the reason why things work, because we made sure that we uh, were connected, we were sharing the same interests, but at the same time, we wanted to grow together with one key interest in this case, thousands and thousands of years ago, it was all about all about uh, ensuring that there is an element to um, uh, to the shared, same interest that everyone shares to be able to uh, make it a success, right? So that's a really important thing to keep in mind. Now, the reason why we're bringing this up is because we tend to forget that one particular reason why social networks are so successful today, apart from technology, is that social network is part of who we are. You know, we as human beings are meant to connect, that we are meant to work with one another, we are meant to build friendship and relationship with one another. It's what makes us humans, right? And therefore, it's really important to keep this in mind while you study and while you look into different uh, ideas and approaches towards social networks, right? And let's keep this in mind as we go forward. And because as we look into it, we very soon realize that um, one of the biggest growth that happened, for instance, in Facebook is because Facebook enabled you to connect with people that you lost touch, right? That was one of the most powerful and popular tools ever on Facebook, which was where it actually started. It was the idea of allowing you to connect with the people you went to the same school with. And so what Facebook did, for instance, really well is that they kept doing that with every other part of our lives people we worked with, people we studied with, people we um, we went to travel with, so all sorts of common interests that their Facebook could find, especially using their own algorithm now, is to make sure that they connect with one another. So then uh, we get to reconnect and also build up some of those relationships further. Now, of course, there's so many other things we can talk about at the moment, but as far as that connection is concerned, let's let's focus for, for it now, okay? 
So let's move on to the next thing. So why why do social networks actually work? OK, so um, that's that's a quite an a quite a insightful sort of like uh, answer that one can try and give. But it ultimately the reason why it works, why they work is because it, it is it is a connected thing. It is a connected thing. And unless things are connected, they don't really make much sense. OK, now, how do we explain this far? Well, probably the best approach to take in looking at why social networks work, why social connection work, is to potentially look at the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, uh, which looked at Abraham, uh, Abraham Maslow in 1943, looked at the theory of human motivation. So you look at what motivates human beings, right? So uh, this is probably the most popular, but also the most used model in the literature today. And so what we thought we could do, can we actually compare and contrast uh, the difference between must hierarchy of needs and actual social media. Now, what you can see in the slide on your uh, left hand side, of course, you will see uh, the uh, must hierarchy of needs. And then on the right hand side, where the pyramid is, you will see actual social media needs or social media connections in the world today, right? So if we start from the basic and the very first level uh, and looking at motivation, uh, motivation, uh, uh, the theory of human motivation from Abraham Maslow is the idea of securing uh, food, water, and shelter for everyone, right? So that was the first and most important thing. And even today, of course, what we do, the first thing we do is try to, to secure a, a house, family, and food for, uh, for our loved ones, right? Now, we will look at the social media today. Then the very first, probably we, we, one could argue that is the idea of creating uh, an actual presence on social media, creating a presence on social media. So then it almost like creating a shelter on social media, creating a place where you go and hang out with others. Now, that's the very first thing you did, whether it was Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, or whatever it was, the very first thing you did was to try to create a presence, and if you will, try to create a shelter in social media. Then as we move up uh, the, the ladder or the, the pyramid, we start to see that the second one in the Masarchy of Needs is safety and security. So um, as far as social media is concerned, the idea is uh, as a sec at the second level is to choose a safe and secure crowd to join in. And why that's important is important because that crowd is going to make you feel better about life, about work and everything else to enable you to move on up the ladder, right? So if we look at the actual uh, ladder uh, on the third level on Master Archie needs, is the need for belonging, is the need to belong and is need for love. Right, now that third level, which we believe uh, is something that can be related to social media, is the idea of uh, community building, of connecting. Because the moment you're connected, that's more. That's the moment when you feel you're not on your own anymore, right? I mean, I can give you a very simple example here. For instance, if you travel abroad, or if you traveled abroad, and you did not speak the language of the locals, the moment you saw someone who spoke English, it just automatically made you feel better because you can relate to that individual because you can understand the language and therefore that gives you an opportunity to connect but at the same time feel like you belong to something you belong to uh, to a group or you belong to a place where you can yourself relate to it because essentially you speak the language if we move up the ladder now and we go to the self-esteem uh, from our care needs the idea of self-esteem as far as social media is concerned can be related to building and creating your personal brand or your personal image, right? So as we move up the ladder, you can start to see uh, what is the most important thing, what are the fundamentals before you get up in the level five, which is the idea of self-actualization or as far as social media is concerned, personal fulfillment. And that personal fulfillment is achieved once we have been really good in building a brand and building an image for ourselves. So then the next level is to feel to feel fulfilled as far as your work or as far as your studies are concerned. So we we hopefully uh, as 
we managed to give you an insight into into probably two very very uh, they, they might look different, but actually they're very similar, master hierarchy of needs, but also the social media hierarchy of needs, if you will. So if we move further, there is one more thing which, which we believe is also gives a bit more perspective as to why social networks actually work. Well, sixth degree of separation is an idea that everyone on average is six steps away from any other person in the world, right? The theory was first uh, proposed in 1929 by uh, the Hungarian writer Frisley Karinthi uh, and in short called Chains. The idea was to see how people are connected with one another. Now, you might wonder, well, why are we talking about this now? Well, we're talking about this now because if you remember, we mentioned one of the first key features that actually made Facebook what happened was to enable people to connect from the same educational institution, which was the universities, right? And then after that, the next thing was to try and uh, uh, make it possible for people to connect through their work environment or through their traveling or through their book clubs or whatever it was. So the idea was to connect with others. Now, uh, that connection is what made social networks where they are today. In fact, we'll talk about this more in our next lecture, but that, that six degree of separation was the reason why, and is the reason why the news flies so fast, and the reason why some of the content goes viral. Okay? Why is that? It's because when you start to look into it, we'll look at a few examples now, but when you start to look into it, and just start to look at the numbers, for instance, before you even get to your fifth degree of separation, you're already connected to thousands and thousands of people. So it's yourself, then your friends, then friends of your friends, and then friends of your friends' friends, right? Before you realize with that single message that went down the chain, you have actually been able to reach out thousands and thousands of people. And that is one uh, reason why, for instance, content on social media goes viral very quick. A piece of content that's got 10 views on YouTube before you realize it got thousands and hundreds of thousands, even millions. Why? Because it's been spread across the chain on different individuals. Uh, and if you look at those, um, if you will, the processes of sharing that has happened through six degree separation is what actually made uh, that a success, right? So uh, if we look a little bit more on the concept, well, that might became a bit more popular in 1993 when it got turned into a film. Uh, Six Degree of Separation, Will Smith, Stockard, Channing, and Donald Sutherland, and Ian McKellen did this uh, movie that actually was based on the idea of Six Degree of Separation. In fact, we recommend you watch it. It's a very interesting movie. It's very uh, engaging, but at the same time, it's got some very powerful and very uh, well-performing uh, uh, sort of likes uh, people in there, all right? So now, if you start to look into that, the idea went a bit quiet for a while, but then in 1994, students at Pennsylvania Albright College invented the six degree of Kevin Bacon. So in which the challenge, the challenge was to connect every film actor, the Bacon uh, actor uh, to Bacon in six cast list of or fewer. So the idea was to see how far baking can go through uh, through uh, through the six degree of separation based on this approach. Now that was really interesting. Before be, that was really interesting. Why? Because later on, uh, six degree of separation, six degree do, degrees of org was a charity that was built based on celebrities. And in this case, uh, Kevin Bacon helped it massively to push forward. And the idea was to try and raise money for different causes around the United States by only by relying on who are you connected through the six degree of separation. And in this case, that's just an example of how much money was raised uh, on support of claim of tornado victims. But that was, and in fact, there is this TED talk about, uh, about K, uh, Kevin Bacon that he's given. So it's probably a good, good idea to watch that because it gives you a bit more insight. But essentially, the idea is to benefit the society by 
putting into place your networked links and your network chains, uh, chains based on six degree of separation. Of course, later on in 2006, researchers being always curious about the world, um, they went and proved that the theory was right, nearly right, okay? So by studying billions of messages, they worked out that any two strangers are on average distance by precisely 6.6 .6 degree separation, and that was the study that was done by Horvitz and Leskovs in 2006. So that was quite interesting to see that this was actually put into practice, and we could actually see some stats and some data on it as well. Now, let's look at a very, very simple example, for instance. So, when you look at all these celebrities, you think, oh, there's like so far, they're, you know, untouchable. How can you get ever connected to them and so on and so forth? Well, actually, if you look at six degrees of separation and based on the model, you most likely won't be very far from these people, right? And I'm going to give you an example shortly that will give you a better idea on it. But essentially, the key thing to keep in mind here is that we are a lot more connected than you think of. OK, I'm sure you've got examples when you traveled uh, around the world and you met people that you never thought would ever meet. OK, and what was your saying when you met those people? Wow, the world is very small. OK. And that just tells you, gives you an idea that the world is a lot more connected than you think of. So there is a very good example that I want to talk to you about, and that is uh, that I took from Social Graph, Facebook Social Graph. Now, this is my network. So these are the people that I'm connected with. Uh, so what I did, I thought, okay, well, let's just look at uh, my degrees of separation. So. I essentially went through and just sort of like gave gave a little bit of, um, uh, if you will, of framing or just highlighting my first and second and third chain of connections in Facebook. And before you realize, before uh, before even going to the third level, I'm already connected to so many people uh, in my second chain, right? And then of course, by the time I get to the third level. I can end up meeting thousands and thousands of people. So uh, whether I wanted to meet um, Adosti Wozniak or anyone, or Elon Musk or anyone else, before you realize you very soon will have people between you and that individual uh, that uh, can help you to connect. Now, here's another very, very simple example, which I think really prescribes this the best. Now, as I said earlier, all the social networks are based, are built essentially on these six degrees of separation, but LinkedIn has benefited from it the most, we believe. And why they did that is because once you connect, once you build a net, uh, profile on LinkedIn, the next thing that LinkedIn does is to actually show you, as, as soon as you start searching for someone, show you how far you are from that individual. So. What were you searching for? I took this example just for, for, for sake of showing you. I mean, Steve wasn't here, for many people don't know, but he's the co-founder of Apple, right? So essentially, he is the engineer genius that did the app design, the Apple computer, right? Now, uh, of course, he's a celebrity and so on and so forth, but the key thing to keep in mind that if he wanted uh, to connect with him, or if I wanted to get through to him, if you only look at how I connected and you look at the actual screen that I've got here for you, you soon realize that I've got about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine people between myself and Steve that can introduce me to Steve, right? So you would not think that is possible, whatever it is. Of course, there's a lot of work that needs to go into and I need to have a, bit, a good business idea or I, I have to have a good case for me to either meet or chat to Steve, but essentially, before before you go into thinking possible, very soon you realize how far you are from that individual. In other words, you're actually not that far, and that is something to keep in mind as we move along. So you can look at these some of these examples yourselves at your own LinkedIn uh, network. In fact, 
If you don't have a LinkedIn, that's the very first thing you need to do right now. Build your profile and then improve your profile and then use everything we learn in this module to improve your social presence because that is something you're going to take with you when you finish the degree as well. Now, let's try and define social networks. Well, social networks, probably the easiest and simplest definition is this one, is the idea of a, which is a group of like-minded people who have come together in a common place to share thoughts and ideas and info about themselves. It is what connects people. And that same interest is what makes the world run, if you will, okay? That is the same interest of people wanting to vote Labor, so the same issue that get people to vote conservative stories, whatever it is. So again, that same interest is what connects people and what helps the uh, world go around. Now, why connections matter? Why do we care? Okay, now we're getting into tech now, a little bit more of technology. And I'm sure for most of you, this is nothing new. This is London Tube, right? The, the map for the London Tube. And you think, what does the London Map Tube has got to do with social networks? Well, that has got a lot more to do than you think. And the reason for it is this. Uh, those of you who've traveled, whenever you travel, or if you plan to travel, any single point in that map, any single station in that map that falls short or does not work very well, or has got uh, problems in there will potentially affect not just the line, right, but also the whole network. Okay, and the reason why that's the case is because the whole network is connected. So any part of the network is as important as any other part of the network, right? So it might be, for instance, that there is an issue, let's say King's Cross. Well, King's Cross is very central. So again, you might end up uh, causing uh, major delays on many, many lines, not just Piccadilly or like, I don't know, uh, Jubilee line, whatever it is, but you're going to have many, many other lines that are actually going to be impacted by it. And that's why what happens is in London Tube and those who manage the network, make sure that when, whenever an issue occurs anywhere in any of those tube stations, they go and try to fix it as soon as possible. Why? Because if they manage to do that, then uh, that problem won't be having an impact on other, on other stations as well. So that's why it's, it's, again, it's important to keep that in mind that we are so well connected, just like the reason why London Tube is so fluent, is so good, is so fast, and it, it works really well, is because everything is synced in such a way that every network, every point of the network helps the other one, okay? And that's why it works, okay? And you might look at different technology examples as well. For instance, let's look at, um, I don't know, um, travel. Uh, you might get a travel ticket in your in your phone, okay? And when you go to the actual train station, instead of just scanning and going through, in some train stations, you still need to go into the machine and actually print out the ticket that you bought online, okay? So that's not very different from buying an actual ticket right in the machine and not having to buy online. Because when you buy online, sometimes you actually have to pay fees to buy the ticket. Uh, of course, there's a lot of stations that once you bought online, you can just scan the QR code and go through, but there's still loads of stations that you need to print. Uh, even after you purchased online, you need to print to have that paper with you to send to the machine and go through the game, right? And so that means that the system is not very well connected. There's different bits in the system that is very innovative, very good, but unless the whole system is well connected with one another, that innovation in itself won't make much of a difference. Okay? Another probably um, quite ma massive uh, case is, for instance, Apple. When Apple introduced the first iPhone 2007, you could count how many apps the iPhone had, right? So, well, that looked nice, but that was going to be a problem very soon. Right. Just think about the amount of apps we have on the App Store today, millions. So the next thing and the next probably biggest innovative move that Apple did was to 
to connect dots and build the app store and allow uh, worldwide developers to build for Apple. And that was a game changer because no, there's always a limit to how much Apple could have built. But Apple tapped into, if you will, six degree of separation as far as software developers are concerned and build a platform to allow every other developer to connect with one another and end up building services for Apple. And of course, on that process, Apple makes uh, makes around, I think it takes around 30% of share of all your sales from the apps in your app store, whatever it is. But the idea is this, that the moment they realized there was going to be a limit, they open up a platform, in this case, App Store, and they connect with developers worldwide to enable them to build for the App Store. And again, that's what I feel today is an incredibly powerful device, just like Android as well, but because it enabled people to do what? To build services on top of the iPhone. Otherwise, any of these smart devices would have been pretty useless if you only had four or five apps. Okay, you could have done email and everything, uh, email, browser, notes, maybe documents, but that would have been it. And that's exactly what BlackBerry did. BlackBerry had some apps, but it had a limit to how much it could do. And with the new commerce, uh, like the iPhone and Samsung and so on and so forth, that changed everything. And that's something that we want you to keep in mind as you think about how the world is connected. So how do we understand your network? Well, going back to the basics, the best thing to do is, of course, to look at your network and see how does your network look like, okay? Who you're connected with? What do you have in common with those people? And does it actually work? Do people in that network benefit from one another? Because if you don't, there is either some problem with the network or you might want to think about how you engage and what you do with the network itself. Because as the saying goes, it's very important who you know, not what you know. Okay, so it's really important to know how well you connect with others. And so, and then the last bit in there is, is the idea of raising a question. Does it work? Does your actual network, does your network that you've got, does your group actually work? Does it make, does it make a difference to the people that are part of the group? And indeed, if it doesn't, that group is going to die soon or people are going to lose interest. And I'm sure you've seen loads and loads of groups in LinkedIn, Facebook and other places as well that people leave because they don't share, they don't benefit same as everyone in the group. Now, when we look at the social media, I think, well, social media is such a small thing uh, that we're not, when you think about that, you think, oh, there's Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, WhatsApp and these others, but there are not many. But actually, face, uh, social networks is incredibly old. I mean, I don't want to say incredibly old. It's not like 100 years old, but it's like uh, quite old as a technology itself. So that started from 1994, 1995 with eBay, Yahoo, then with the blogging in 1998, 1999. And then he grew with all different social networks from i5, Tagged, Flickr, Delicious, MySpace, uh, Vimeo. And then you had these newcomers. Uh, LinkedIn, uh, of course, Vivo, Spotify, and others that are still around today. But there's a lot more social networks that uh, you can think of. And of course, one reason why it's probably a good idea if you've got interest, but also if you want to look into, is to see what actually made them, what, what actually made them uh, successful. What are the key areas that made Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and others successful? And we'll pick up on some of those throughout the module, but it's also a good idea for you to look into and analyze some of these social networks because that's how you understand the deep, the deep insights on these social networks themselves, right? So what are some of the types of social networking channels? Well, if we were to group them, uh, we could say there's social networks about connections like Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus is gone now. Multimedia sharing like YouTube, video, Vimeo, Pinterest and others. Professional networking sites like LinkedIn, Classroom, SQL, Monster, Informational, Super Greeny, DIY community, forums and others as well. You've got educational ones, Super Green, um, uh, educational one like Student Room, 
um, math room, e-learners, then you've got hobbies like scrapbooks, sports and groups. And then of course you've got academic ones, Academia, ITSU, Khan Academy and others, which we use quite a lot. Thank you, bye-bye.